So I'm working on this little visualization project where it's a pretty simple concept. It's just so people can get an idea of the space that I'm working with. And you'll notice, just testing it out, I hit this spot where, like, hmm, strange. I can't go any farther, right? So there's something going on here that's not letting me go into this area that seems like it should be fine, right? Uh, also related, notice how I can just walk through the door here. We'll come back to uh, how that works versus that hitting there uh, and how to do that specifically. So let me jump out here and take a look at what's going on. So right about here, we were running into something. So let's visualize the collisions that are on. So you can go up to show and turn on collisions. You'll see I have this line here. This is representing my invisible barrier. So first thing I need to do is figure out what's causing, what, what piece of geometry, similar to see these steps here, this shell here represents the barrier of the steps, which is something I'm also going to change soon because I need the character to go up the steps and I can't have this uh, barrier here. I need it to follow the form a little bit better. But let's just take care of this really big one first. So what's causing this line, which is our collision? I found the quickest way to do it is just select a shape you think it might be coming from. And so in this case, this wall and hit delete. And as I delete that, you'll notice that that particular collision line went away as well. So let me undo that. And this is telling me that this particular shape is what has that extra large collision. You would hope the character could go all the way to the wall, but it has this collision out here. So that just happened during import. So this shape was created in Blender and just imported. Let's go take a look at that. So I'm going to right click, browse to asset. So here it is here. I'm going to double click to open the asset. So it's this big wall, and the wall, the default, notice how the, the shape, it's kind of at an angle. So if we go up here to show simple collision, you'll see that the automatic collision was set based on the shape uh, being at a straight angle, but this is at a non-straight angle, so therefore it just made this collision uh, like this. In certain cases, this may be totally fine, but in this exact case, I need little more access to the wall here. So what I'm going to do is go to collision and remove the current collision. So now the wall has no collision. The character would run right through it. I'm going to make my own. So I'm going to go to collision, add a simple box collision, and it does the same thing. You'll notice it made it aligned with the world, but you have control over the collision shape. So I'm going to switch over the top view. A little bit more. And selecting the shape and rotate or hit E. And I'm going to rotate the collision to line up here. For what I'm doing, it doesn't need to be perfect. But I'm going to try and make it perfect anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Go back to perspective and make sure that looks fine. All right, so you can see the character is. All right, let's go just a little bit closer. And selecting it, nudge it back just a little bit. It's a little rotated. Actually, I think the shape is not exact. The shape has a little bit of a bow in it as well, just a little bit, because it's the side of the ship. And we'll say for what I need it to be, you see a little bit of a gap at the end, but that's okay. The character's not going to be running in the corner of this particular wall. So then I'm going to hit save and close that and come back here and let's go find that spot again so running through running through all right now when i get over to here i can go all the way to the wall and i don't stop anymore where i hit that invisible barrier before because we've cleaned up that collision and so similarly, you can see, remember there was a, a, a spot right here. I also need to put a hole up in the roof there if I want my character to go up. Anyway, so notice how I can run through this particular shape here. Uh, but I have a firm barrier there and a firm barrier there. Now what I did for that one, just to go back in history here. So same thing, I browse to the asset. I'm going to double click to open it. And I've already customized the 
uh, collision for this. So if I show collision, it also came in with a really messy, huge collision. But what I did is I have three collision cubes, nice and simple, so it doesn't take up a lot of memory. You could turn on super complex where it's going to totally form fit. Well, let me show you what that looks like. If I turn on complex collision, you can see it created this collision that was very form fitting. But actually, I didn't want it this form fitting because I want my character for what I'm doing. I just need people to explore the space so I don't need them to have to jump over this little threshold here. I'm fine with them being able to pass right through the floor. So I don't want to use this super complex collision. And I also want it as light as possible. So what I did was I made three boxes. So same thing. I cleared off all of the collisions. Let me show you here. I went, that's a good idea. Let me just delete the one. I don't want to do it all over again. So delete, selected collision. I got rid of just that one there. I have one here. I'm going to alt drag to make another one. Or I could have gone up to collision add a box simplified and resize that. You have these other options too, but a, a box works fine for what I need. Then scale to fit that. It's a little eh, hard to see. I am looking up across the top here. If you need to, you can switch over to top view as well. If it makes it any easier for you. So I can see the, there's the collision sliding it in to fit on top of the wall. Here's the opening here, the density of that. So I know I'm right at the edge there, right at the end of the wall. And let's look one more time for the perspective, just to make sure I'm not too high top or bottom. And all that looks good. And I'll save, actually it was fine before I saved and made the mess, but I'll save anyway. And again, back to here. That's why I can slip right through that door because the collision allows me an opening. Again, if I turn off the collision, you don't see that. But if I turn on the collision, you can see that line there and that line there represents the opening where my character could just run through. So again, if you need to modify your collisions uh, for gameplay or you know for physics or whatever, um, you just need to go to the asset, double click to open it, and mess around with the collisions, and make sure you save. Now there is a case to be made for using the complex collision as a quick fix. So let me show you here where I'm running into something, right? So I'm sliding along. So there's some kind of boundary right here that I can't go through. So I'm trying to go through it, and I can't. So and you see it's kind of going at an angle here, whatever that is. So let's take a look. So here in the room, I can see this diagonal line going through my world here and I need to find what piece of geometry that is and it's actually not this wall if I select this wall and delete it it's not that wall but if I select this wall out here and delete that that's the culprit right there so I'm gonna undo a couple times to get my walls back and Actually, real quick, I'm going to delete that, see which one that was. Okay, that's cube six. Come back here, because I can't select it once I get through there. So go to cube six, right click, browse to asset, and double click to open it. So I have this wall here. This is the one that when I go and show simple collision, this is again what's happening. So it just made this box around here. Now I showed how you can customize and make your own new box collision. But let's, for the moment, hide the simple collision. So take a look at how dense that is. And let's turn on the complex collision. So the complex collision doesn't look that much more insane. It might even be equal to the complexity or density that the simple collision had. So what I actually want to do is just use this as a default for the collision instead of the simple collision. Again, so here's simple and complex turned uh, on together and I really like the profile of the complex collision so what you can do is in your settings over here type complex to find your collision complexity and I want to switch from the project default to use complex collision as simple so I'm going to click on that and now what that means is effectively the I'm going to turn off simple 
So all we have now is the complex, kind of hard to see in this mode. Um, can I get it a glancing angle? You can kind of see a line over there, but I showed you a minute ago what the complex looks like. And that's now what's going to be used for the collision. So let's save that. Go back to our main level. Go back and start to play. It's through this little hallway here. I know he didn't fall in the hole there. That's on purpose. So now right about here is where that was. And now you see is fancy free. She is now fancy free to run in that space because we were able to clean up that collision. So that wall is on the other side of that wall there. But now we know it's a quick and easy way to clean the collision. And it wasn't that bad using the complex. Now the reason I didn't, again, do that for these is I want the character to be able to pass through right there. I don't want them to get stuck on uh, not being able to pass through. So that's why I cut little holes uh, in the multiple box collisions so that the character can just move freely through the hallway. Another workflow you can do is, again, for example, say I have this shape here. I delete it, and that's the collision that I needed to get rid of. I want to get rid of this box here. From here, you can also just choose Edit the Shape and that will pop you also directly into the edit mode here and again if I type complex then I can again choose this is a pretty simple shape so I'm just going to switch and use the complex collision as the simple once again if I look at the simple it's kind of a weird non-fitting shape depending on what you need it might be fine but for me I need a little more precision there so let's look at the complex and not look at the simple and it actually looks a little more simple and it is form fitting so I'm going to switch to complex collision as simple and save that then let's take a look at it back here at the main level it cleaned that up nicely so my character can now not hit their head as they're running by this shape if that needs to happen actually they need to sneak down these stairs so I had to clean up this area here as well so they have access to this little stairwell to slip down so about the steps in particular, I have these steps over here for what I'm doing for this project. I don't really need to go up these, uh, but let me just show you as an example. So looking up these steps, if I wanted, if I had a hole up there and I wanted to go up there, right now I'm hitting the up arrow, actually W, to try and get up the steps, right? So the other steps work, but these ones don't. So how do I allow my character to go up these stairs? So let's take a look at that. So looking at the stairs here, I have collision enabled. So you can see it from this view already. So here's my collision, and this is why my character can't go up the steps. I have the simple collisions being used here. So let's go look at that. And framing in here, if I look at my simple collision, that's what we just saw. And if we look at the complex collision, this is actually what's going to be needed for my character to be able to hop up the steps so what we can do is and there's a fine detail here that I want you to notice if I switch to use complex collision as simple I don't need to remove the simple collision I can just leave it right there because the simple collision will not be used we're using the complex instead when it does the query to find out if your character can go up so I'm gonna hit save and show you this in action so note, I left the simple collision, but I set it to use complex instead. Now when we start over, let's run into the hallway here and sneak in there, look up the steps, and now I can go up the steps and pop my head through the floor. Again, I don't really need the character to go up here for this project with the ship, but just to show what that setting does, and that you don't need to delete the simple collision. If you may want it in the future, you may want to go ahead and keep it there. Now here's a little bit of an interesting thing to point out as well. You may, for the savvy viewer, you may have wondered, wait a minute, how come the head can go through the ceiling, but it does stop at the shoulder. So the collision is working, but not seemingly properly because the head shouldn't be popping up there if the collision is working. Well, in this exact scene, as a matter of fact, I needed to do a little cheat uh, to make the environment match with the mannequin size. So the environment was built to scale in Blender. But if we take a look at the blueprint for the mannequin, 
hop in here, I wanted the scale just to look a little bit bigger. So I did it quickly by just scaling the character, but I didn't scale the collision capsule to size up with the character as well. And yeah, it's a little messy in terms of, you know, if I uncheck the scale, I could try and scale the capsule, but because it's apparent, you'll notice it's, you know, it's apparent in the hierarchy here. It's scaling everything else that's a child as well. And, you know, for what I'm doing in this particular project, I don't really care. It's fine if the head goes through the roof because there's nowhere else where the head's really going through the roof. So that's just my lazy uh, gets the job done. You know, sometimes you just got to go for speed versus accuracy. And in my case, I don't mind that the head goes through the floor because normally the character shouldn't be over there. But if you do need it to be accurate, your character probably should fit within the collision capsule. Just wanted to point that out. That's why the character's head is popping through the ceiling. For additional information, there is some pretty good documentation on setting up collisions with static meshes here. I'll put a link in the description if you want, if you like to read and go a little bit farther on some of the details. For example, some more complex setups. You know, these are just the basics of sphere, capsule, and box, which we used. But it goes through what some of the more mathy stuff when it comes to all the uh, all these different options here. There's a good example here that will walk you through that. So again, a link will be in the description. And hopefully that's just enough info to get you going on the basics of setting up your collisions. Speaking of collision, I highly recommend you watch this video on why that banana is colliding with the ground and what relevance it has to this stop motion behind the scenes animation from my son Dexter. Please check it out, like and subscribe.